Jeremiah chapter 38, we'll begin reading verse number 1. The Bible says, Then Shepathiah, the son of Matan, and Gedaliah, the son of Pasher, and Jukal, the son of Shemaliah, and Pasher, the son of Malchiah, heard the words that Jeremiah had spoken unto all the people, saying, Thus saith the Lord, He that remaineth in this city shall die by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence. But he that goeth forth to the Chaldeans shall live, for he shall have his life for a prey, and shall live. Thus saith the Lord, This city shall surely be given into the hand, the king of Babylon's army, which shall take it. Therefore the princes said unto the king, We beseech thee, let this man be put to death. For thus he weakeneth the hands of the men of war that remain in the city, and the hands of all the people, and speaking such words unto them. For this man seeketh not the welfare of this people, but the hurt. And then Zedekiah the king said, Behold, he is in your hand, for the king is not he that can do anything against you. Then took they Jeremiah and cast him into the dungeon of Malchiah, the son of Hamalek, that was in the court of the prison, and let down Jeremiah with cords, and in the dungeon there was no water but mire. So Jeremiah sunk in the mire. Now when Ebed-Melech, the Ethiopian, one of the eunuchs, which was in the king's house, heard that they had put Jeremiah in the dungeon, the king then sitting in the gate of Benjamin, Ebed-Melech, went forth out of the king's house and spake unto the king, saying, My lord the king, these men have done evil and all that they have done to Jeremiah the prophet, whom they have cast in the dungeon. And he is like to die for hunger in the place where he is, for there is no bread in the city. Then the king commanded Ebed-Melech the Ethiopian, saying, Take from hence thirty men with thee, and take up Jeremiah the prophet out of the dungeon before he die. So Ebed-Melech took the men with him and went into the uh, house of the king uh, uh, under the treasury and took thence old cast cloths and old rotten rags and let them down by cords into the dungeon to Jeremiah. And Ebed-Melech, the Ethiopian, said unto Jeremiah, Put now these old cast cloths and rotten rags under thine armholes under the cords. And Jeremiah did so. So they drew up Jeremiah with cords and took him up out of the dungeon, and Jeremiah remained in the court of the prison. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for all the good singing, the youth choir, the congregational singing, the special singing. Lord, we thank you for a good Sunday school hour. Lord, we thank you for being a good God. We're thankful, Lord, you're gracious, you're long-suffering, you're full of tender mercy. Lord, we are all reaping better than we have sowed, and Lord, we thank you for your good grace. Now, Father, help us this morning. Lord, I pray you'd come sit down amongst us. I pray you'd speak to our hearts. I pray that, Lord, your people would be edified and encouraged and enlightened to thy truth. Lord, we do pray, as uh, others have prayed this morning, if there's somebody here today lost without God, today would be the day of their salvation. Now, Father, I pray you'd meet with us, use this unworthy vessel, and God help us this day. We'll bless you for it, for it's in the holy and wonderful name we ask it all. Amen and amen. I want to draw your attention to a couple things. In verses 1 through 3, you find a pronouncement. Jeremiah lets them know that if uh, they stay in the city, they're going to die. They're going to die by the sword, they're going to die by famine, or they're going to die by pestilence, but they do have a death sentence upon them. The city has been besieged, uh, and uh, there is no way out. And the only hope they've got is to trust in the Lord. Can I say today, if you're here today and lost, you have a death sentence on your life. There is no way out, but you do have hope, and it's found in Jesus. Uh, and he'll save you from your sins. Uh, we see there is a pronouncement. Uh, mm, trouble was coming. And can I say that you and I that are Bible believers, uh, 
that keep up with what's going on in this old wicked world, we can see the imminent return of the Lord Jesus is at hand. Uh, the Apostle Paul said in 2 Timothy 3, This know also uh, that in the last day perilous times shall come. Uh, then he gives us a whole list of things that will happen uh, in the last days. Uh, and friend, they're not only happening, they've been happening for a while. Uh, and uh, uh, it's just about time for the trumpet to sound uh, and the Lord's going to take his church out of here. Now we can preach it till we're blue in the face, but unless uh, sinners will look to Jesus, uh, when the trumpet sounds, they find no hope. Uh, I'm glad there's hope in the Lord. Uh, we see the pronouncement. Uh, notice the plot in verse number 4. Uh, therefore the princes uh, said unto the king we beseech you let this man be put to death this will not be the first preacher that will be put to death for preaching the truth mm? won't be the last preacher mm, they didn't like what they heard can I say people still don't like hearing truth you know the truth can't hurt but the truth will set you free hmm it goes on to say, For thus he weakened the hands of the men of war that remain in this city and the hands of the people and speaking such words unto them. For this man seeketh not the welfare of this people but the hurt. Liar, liar, pants on fire. If anybody wanted to help him, people, it was Jeremiah. If anybody's looking out for their welfare, it was Jeremiah. Hmm? Can I help you with something? Uh, uh, I, I, I got to just say this. Uh, uh, the Republicans aren't going to help you. Uh, the Democrats aren't going to help you. Uh, 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 they're not interested in your welfare. They're interested in lining their own pockets. Uh, but I've got good news. There is one who is interested in you. Uh, his name is Jesus. He's loved you with an everlasting love. Uh, and he has saved folks who are concerned about you. And what a blessing to be part of the family of God. Uh, we see there's a plot against God's man. Now notice the peril, verse 6. I'm going somewhere, just hang with me. Verse number 6, it says, Then took they Jeremiah and cast him into the dungeon of Malchiah, the son of Hamadlech. And the court was in, uh, that was in the court of the prison, and let down Jeremiah the cords. And in the dungeon there was no water but mire. So Jeremiah sunk in that mire. They took God's man, and because he had the audacity to tell them what God said, they put him in the dungeon. Is that not what your Bible said? Right. And it said there was no water, and when he got there, he was put in the mire, and he began to sink. Now, can I say this dungeon that is in the uh, prison, the court of the prison where it's located at, uh, uh, this dungeon is not what you uh, are thinking of. I know what you're thinking of. You've seen all these movies where there's a castle and they throw a guy down in the dungeon and there's chains on the walls uh, and there's uh, mice or rats running around uh, and there's bones of other uh, uh, fellows that uh, suffered fate there and there's some... Uh, uh, old fella hung up uh, on the chains. He's got this big old hairy beard and he's been there forever in rags. Uh, no, it, we're not talking about that kind of dungeon. The dungeon that they're speaking of here today is what you and I would know as a cistern. And the mire is not just mud. It's human waste. And so they take the man of God and they defame him so much they throw him in a cistern full of human waste that's more than hatred that is disdain we see the peril but thank God notice the partisan verse number 8 there's Ebed Melech he went forth to the king's house spake to the king verse 9 he tells the king what they've done to Jeremiah a partisan is an advocate Aren't you glad, uh, being one of God's youngins, we have an advocate who's seated at the right hand of the Father, ever living to make intercession for you and I? Uh, it doesn't matter what the world says about us. It doesn't matter what the world does to us. Uh, I'm glad there's one who's in control, uh, and he's pleading our case before God. Uh, and then we see the pardon. Ebed-Melech goes to get him out. He finds some old rags... Old rotten rags, it calls it, and old cast clots, which are torn garments. Some of you remember I preached on that several years ago. Brother Bob enjoyed that message. The only person ever enjoyed that message. Huh? That's the only time I've ever preached that message. Brother Bob was here about them old cast clots. Huh? Um, but uh, 
we find that he's brought out of this dungeon by some old rotten rags and cast cloths that nobody's cared about. That nobody's given a second thought to. Now, some of you will remember, uh, I preached a message several years ago, and I've had the privilege of really preaching it not only all over the country, but in other countries as well. Uh, I preached a message that's come known as the Tao message out of Der Jeremiah chapter 20. And some of you here have not heard that message, and I'm not going to uh, re-preach that message, but I'm going to give you some highlights from that message. Uh, maybe. There we go. I needed a towel. In Jeremiah chapter number 20, verse number 9, Jeremiah is uh, uh, feeling discouraged. He's feeling depressed. You see, Jeremiah is no stranger to being hated for preaching the Word of God. You see, uh, uh, he had surely thought that they would hear the message and repent towards God and God would uh, stay the evil he had planned for Israel. Uh, I, I, I've seen many young preachers, Brother Josh, uh, uh, over the years, boy, they accept the call and they think they're going to be the next Billy Sunday. They're going to turn the world upside down. Uh, everybody's going to want to hear what they've got to say. Uh, everybody's going to get repent, get saved, and uh, church is going to be revived and God's going to do great things things only to find out that not everybody listens not everybody cares and some people actually despise you for telling them they're lost and they're going to die and go to hell hmm? uh, so Jeremiah's been preaching for a while by the time he gets to chapter 20 uh, they put him in the stocks outside the temple they're making fun of him he says he's in derision daily uh, and Jeremiah uh, the great man of God the great prophet of God said I will no longer make mention of him uh, I will not speak in his name anymore and Jeremiah throws in the towel so that's it I'm over and that message that God gave me I remind you what's in the towel. When you throw in the towel and you quit, uh, our Baptist distinctives are in that towel. Can I say there used to be a time if you announced you as a Baptist, people knew what you stood for. Uh, but it seems like with every year the line gets pushed back. Uh, seems like now we're trying to line up uh, 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 with the feel-good churches uh, and with the charismatic churches uh, and we're watering down the gospel message. Uh, 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 when you throw in the towel, you're throwing away uh, what our Baptist forefathers, uh, many of them gave their lives for that we could have here today. Uh, when you throw in the Bible, you throw in, or throw in the towel, you're throwing in the Bible. Hmm? Listen, I make no apologies. The King James Bible is the Word of God for English-speaking people. Anything else, at best, is a commentary, but I wouldn't even call it that. Mm? But it's not a Bible. Let me just say this. The Holy Ghost wrote one book. The Holy Ghost uses one book. And we're begotten by an incorruptible seed. Every other one comes from a false text, uh, from the Vaticanus text, which came out of the Catholic Church. Uh, only one Bible comes from the Texas Receptus, the received text, uh, uh, the Greek text that God uh, used, the common language that uh, uh, holy men of God pinned down. Uh, uh, what Bible is that? The King James Bible. Uh, you throw in the towel, you're throwing away the Bible. You throw in the towel, you're throwing away your family. You throw in the towel, you're throwing away everything that's precious. Well, by the time uh, uh, the midpoint of that verse, uh, 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 Jeremiah says, but his word was in my uh, heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. What he did, he got his towel back. Uh, and he begins to apologize to God for throwing in the towel. Uh, and I bless the name of the Lord that he's long-suffering towards us. Uh, hey, I'm glad he lets us get our towel back. Uh, I'm glad First John 1, 9 in the Bible. Uh, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, can I say this? Uh, that towel message should remind us about how precious the things of God are. That towel message should reassure us that we're headed down the right path. Matter of fact, uh, uh, if the devil never, never bothers us, that means we're not doing anything. Mm? He only fights those he fears. Hmm? Can I say that Tao message should rally us to keep on keeping on for the honor and glory of God. Uh, 
This morning, I want to preach on this thought. Do you still have your towel? Do you still have your towel? Now listen, that towel is a whole lot more than just a rag. It represents your life sold out for Christ. Hmm? And uh, it is very valuable. Now listen, our lives once were rotten rags. Hmm? All our righteousness is as filthy rags, the Bible says. Can I say they're just uh, old torn garments? Uh, they were useless uh, outside the grace of God. Uh, but hallelujah, uh, Brother James, one day, uh, 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 Brother Clint, uh, Jesus passed by our way. Uh, and I bless the name of the Lord. Uh, 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 he took my old tattered garment uh, and he robed me in his righteousness, uh, washed me in his blood. Uh, hey, sealed me with the Holy Spirit of promise. Uh, wrote my name down in heaven. Uh, what a day, what a day, what a day. Happy day, neighbor. Uh, when Jesus saved my never dying soul. Uh, now listen, it's a blessing to be saved. And your life in Christ matters and can make an impact. Amen. But individually, we're limited. There's only so much you can do. But you see, God fitly framed us together because he knew we needed a local assembly to accomplish what needs to get done. Amen. So that said, let me, let, me, let me just show you what I'm getting at. Individually, you can get some things done. But collectively, oh, collectively, when we are knitted together, we can get a whole lot more done. We can impact a whole lot more. We can accomplish a whole lot more for God's glory, God's grace. Uh, uh, listen, uh, there's none of us worth the powder to take to blow away in our flesh and ourselves. Uh, uh, and listen, you can uh, uh, be used of God to touch people's hearts and touch people's lives and change their lives. Uh, but whoa, oh, when we get together, hmm? listen, let me just say first of all, individually, one of them rags. One of them torn garments couldn't have gotten Jeremiah up out of that prison. Huh? See, one rag ain't going to do much. But you get a bunch of them together. Are you listening? Huh? You'd think he'd learn. Look at this. We can do something now. Huh? You see, when we collectively or what we should be we can limit the load of somebody uh, 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 who's uh, 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 really uh, in a mess we can lift uh, one whose burdens are bigger than them does not Galatians tell us uh, 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 that we are to bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ uh, you know as a church uh, we can bear the burdens of folks uh, we can help them up out of their mess. Uh, uh, we can help deliver them. Uh, we can do a work. Uh, hey, what a blessing when we can uh, be used to lift one's load. Uh, now listen, there's been times I've come to the house of God and I was loaded down. And the people of God helped lift my burden. Uh, listen, it's a blessing when somebody lets you know that they're praying for you. But it's a real blessing when a whole church is praying for you. Hmm? Uh, see, collectively, we can lift one under the load. I thought about this. Individually, you can witness and be a soul winner. But collectively, we can throw out a lifeline. Are you listening? We, we can get a whole lot more done collectively. Huh? I don't know, uh, I guess on average on Monday night we hit about 500 houses. Now individually you might be able to hit 10, 15, but collectively we hit a whole community in one night. huh? How's that happen? Uh, we're knitted together. Uh, 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 hey, uh, we've come together under the same umbrella. Uh, we're working together. Uh, we can hey, throw out a lifeline and just maybe somebody will get born again. Isn't that a blessing? Huh?
I'm glad there was a lifeline thrown out to me on the third Saturday, March of 1974. Hallelujah. Uh, listen, I know you can get saved under a tree. I know you can get saved in your car. I know you can get saved uh, uh, anywhere, but hallelujah, I got saved in church. Thanks be unto God, there was a church uh, still thrown out the lifeline. Uh, listen, individually, you can get some stuff done. Thank God for your towel. But collectively, collectively, I'm not a cowboy. I wish I was. You're going to stop sitting on the front seat. <laughs> Collectively, we can lasso one that's in trouble. Huh? Look at him. We got him now. He ain't going nowhere. Huh? We can lasso him. Say, what are you talking about, preacher? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Quit messing up my illustrations, Clint. Worked hard on this. Huh? You know, the Bible, nothing's just pinned down because God was born. Right. Everything in your Word of God is important and impactful. And God uses, when, it, when the Lord walked on earth, He would speak in parables. He would use uh, earthly things uh, uh, to reveal hi hidden heavenly meanings. Uh, and can I say that in the Bible, the eagle is always a picture of the Christian. Uh, and aren't you glad, hallelujah, He used an eagle. He didn't use a buzzard. I've known some buzzards. Uh, 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 hey, but He used an eagle. An eagle's a majestic bird. Uh, an eagle builds its uh, nest uh, high on a rock. Uh, an eagle doesn't eat leftovers, always eats fresh meat. Uh, aren't you glad we can come to the house of God? Uh, we don't have to live on what we got last week. Uh, God meets with us with fresh food, fresh feast, fresh oil. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, hey, the eagle uh, 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 has a second set of eyelids. Uh, and when a predator is after him, uh, like a falcon or a hawk, uh, uh, the eagle can fly directly to the sun. Uh, and when the enemy is looking for the eagle, Eagle, uh, it gets blinded by the sun uh, uh, but it doesn't affect the eagle because uh, God made him with that second eyelid so he can go right to the sun uh, and it a blessing uh, when the hounds of hell are on our trail uh, we can just go to the sun uh, and they lose all sight of us when they see him but one of the great qualities of an eagle eagles care about other eagles I'm told that at some point in an eagle's life, most of them, Brother Brian, are tempted to come down off their rock and get down on the ground. And when they're on the ground, they're, they're a prey for foxes and all kinds of predators. And they say those eagles go through a molting period. And they start plucking out their feathers. Uh, and they start going through this molting period. Uh, it's what we would call, uh, call maybe a period of depression, Brother James. Uh, and when that eagle, uh, uh, Brother Bob, begins to pluck out its feathers, it don't even look like an eagle anymore. Uh, and can I say there are some children of God out there uh, 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 that maybe don't look like a child of God today. Uh, they may be in a bad spot and in a bad shape. Uh, uh, but what I'm told uh, is when other eagles uh, uh, see that eagle down off his rock uh, in that molding period. Uh, they begin to fly around him, uh, begin to call to him, uh, begin to encourage him, uh, try to get him back to the rock. Uh, and we can uh, collectively uh, uh, rally around somebody and lasso them. Uh, uh, begin to point them back to the rock uh, and get them back to Jesus. Uh, get them out of that molding period. Uh, uh, let the Lord uh, do work on them. Uh, and all of a sudden they'll start looking like an eagle again. Uh, they'll start soaring like an eagle again. Uh, hey, what a blessing to see somebody restored. Uh, Individually, you can be a blessing to somebody, but not like we can be collectively. Boy, we can lasso them, get around them, uh, begin to encourage them and get them back to Jesus. Uh, can I say this? Uh, listen, individually we can do some things, but not like we can collectively. Amen. Can I say? Collectively. We can limit the exposure of some. I'm here, Aiden. Why don't you stand right there by the, by the table? Stand right there. There he is.
handsome young man. You are handsome. Huh? Fine young man in church. Sings for Jesus. But the devil's got a sight on him. Devil wants to knock him out of church. Devil wants to get him out there in the world. Devil's got all kinds of things to lure him out there. And oh, there's Aiden going through the fire. Mm -mm. Oh, might be some intense pressure in his life. See why a lot of you are sitting here and you've had a charm life. This young man hasn't. And the devil uses that against him. The devil weighs that on him. A lot of pressure, a lot of heat, a lot of problems. Oh, trying to weigh him down, huh? Leaning on him, huh? If he's not careful, then the devil will put some little sweet thing in front of him. Yeah. A little Delilah. Huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, not careful. The, the devil will send him down a path yeah. of needles yeah. right. and bottles. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Huh? He's, 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 he's up against it. But collectively some folks can stand in the gap make up the edge take the heat so he can get some relief uh, so he can get some help uh, uh, so the devil lose sight of him uh, 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 dealing with this crowd that's drawn a line in the sand uh, saying we're not going to let you have him uh, we're going to intercede uh, we're going to stand in this gap uh, make up the head thank you Aiden you can sit down individually or his family could do something but not like a whole church can collectively friend we can limit the exposure that some of these kids are facing. Some of these folks are facing. Can I say this? Individually, we can have an outreach. But collectively, we lengthen the outreach. You know, the sun never sets on the ministry of Emmanuel Baptist Church. You know, individually, we might be able to support a missionary or two out of our home. But collectively, we're supporting 60-something. Uh, the, uh, uh, the outreach has been lengthened because we've linked up together to do a work for God. Huh? Amen. Here in a little few weeks, I'll be going to Naj's hometown. That don't mean much to some of you. That's St. Lucia. You know, individually, I couldn't go. But collectively, I'm going. Hmm? I'm going on behalf of the church to impact some folks for the cause of Christ. Mm. Listen. Let me say this. Individually. One little towel. We're no match for the devil. He run over us like a steamroller over fresh asphalt. But collectively, you know, the Bible does say the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of the living God. Amen. See, collectively, we can lick the devil. Uh, that's old terminology for the fact we kick his tail. Are you listening? Individually, we can't. But collectively, he can't, he can't prevail against the church. Amen. You know, a gate is a defense, defensive mechanism. Huh? I never ever heard a commander in chief say, well, we need more gates for our military. But yet hell enlargeth herself every day. You know, how come we're not kicking open the gates of hell and taking over some territory? It's because we've been wined and dined by liberal, non-Bible believers to become welcome mats. You know the church is to go on the offensive. Sure. Amen. We're not to sit back and rest on our laurels. We're to take the gospel. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Right. We're to take the word of God to them. But we've been brainwashed to think that this is service. No, this is worship. Right. Uh, service happens outside these doors. Right. Mm. We can lick the devil. 
Now listen, Psalms 133, verse number 1 says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Where there is no unity, there is no unction. But if we'll be unified and we'll come together under the authority of the Word of God and the Lord Jesus Himself as our head, we can link up together and make a difference. But Brother Donald, now Ephesians tells us we're fitly framed together. God's the one that's put us together. Brother Donald, if this right here is your towel, and you've thrown in your towel, we can't be in unity. We can't get it done. There's a there's a breach. Well, this half can try and do something, and this half can try and do something, but it can't accomplish what it could if you're in your place. So let me ask you, do you still have your towel? Are you being what God would have you to be? Or are you feeling sorry for yourself? Have you listened to the lies of the devil that you're useless and you can't make a difference? Well, I promise you when I tried to lift up Brother Clint a minute ago, this towel right here, it made a difference. You can make a difference when you're in your place, when you're doing your part, when you're being what you're supposed to be. You can make a difference. Jesus don't want you to be somebody else. just wants you to be you. He don't want you to try and do what you can't do. He just wants you to be you. But he needs your towel. He needs you. Uh, I wonder tonight, this morning, you still have your towel? Miss Kathy's waving hers. She literally still has hers. Uh, I wonder... Y'all in? Miss Lynn's got hers back there waving it. You still have your towel? You still where you're supposed to be? Say, preacher, I'm here. Are you? I'm talking about it wholeheartedly. Hmm? Huh? Because you can just show up. That don't mean it's going to get done. But if you give the Lord your whole heart, whole body, whole mind, whole soul, give him all, there's no limit to what he can do. See, our great God is omnipotent, all-powerful, and the only force in the universe that can limit God is us by not letting him have first place in our life. Thank God for a eunuch that didn't have much going for him. But he loved the man of God. And he used what he could, some old rags, some old torn garments, and he delivered the man of God so the man of God could be what he should be. There's people need delivered. Are you what you should be? so they can be what they're supposed to be. Do you still have your towel? If not, I'd get up in this altar and get it back today. Uh -uh. I'd get up here and say, Lord, I just want to be what you'd have me be. I don't want to be anything more. I don't want to be anything less. I just want to be what you'd have me to be. Maybe here today, you're not saved, but the Lord's been dealing with you. Today would be a good day to get saved by the good grace of God. Say, preacher, I don't know how to get saved. You come. We'll get somebody to take a Bible show you how to be saved. But dear Christian friend, do you still have your towel or have you thrown it in? Have you quit on God? Don't quit on God. He didn't quit on you. All the way down to Via Della Rosa, he went the extra mile for you. All he asked us to do is go the extra mile for him.
Would you be willing to do that today? Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. While they're picking out a song, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. Lord, I just want to be what you'd have me to be. Help me not throw in the towel. Help me, help me not to become weary in well-doing. Help me not to listen to the lies of the devil that I'm useless and of no good. No telling how many people pass by them old rotten rags and those old clouts. Thought those things were useless, but yet God in the right hand. Lord, they were knitted together and they delivered Jeremiah. And Lord, in your hands, there's nothing we can't accomplish. So God, I pray you'd bless this invitation. Lord, if somebody's thrown in their towel, I pray they'd come get it back. Lord, I pray you'd give us a rekindled joy for the Lord and the work of the Lord. God, send revival to our hearts. God, do a work. And God, certainly, if there's one amongst us unsaved, I pray today would be the day of their salvation. Bless now, Father. We'll bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.